Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome back to Do Not Take This Cat Home. Going to give it another, well not another go, but we're going to continue where we left off, basically. I've not taken the cat home, but eventually I guess we're going to have to take the cat home. I'm just going to double check though a few things like, what was here? Oh, okay, we can make a choice. In other playthroughs, if I keep going, if there's still tons of interest, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the other places. But yeah, the dog park, I want to... Yes. Uh, I can't do anything except pick up and drop it. But is it, like, as aggressive as inaction? You drop the puppy. What if I stay at the park, but... Morph, morph. Uh, okay, let's... I'm not gonna pet the dog, I'll leave it the last second. I just want to see what happens. If we get the same message then. A wise decision. And then we end up... And the dog park. Okay, so we cancel it out the very last second rather than death. Because I think... If we do... Hold. Stay. Throw. Pet. And then leave then. Is it the same? Good. <laughs> Ways decision versus good. Hmm. All right. Sure. We'll. Hmm. This entire area, let's say, is done. Until I do. I mean, because now we can go. What if we go to the dog park again? You decide in this park or something. The only one within walking distance nearby dog park. I, I just gonna come back and then leave. Yes, leave, leave, leave. What? <laughs> interesting. All right, well, let's go watch a movie then. It's been a while since a film came out that looked interesting enough for you to drag yourself to a movie theater. But there's a showing of one such film at the old theaters. The movie was a little too niche to be picked up by the new cinema that opened right across the street. That's okay, though. You're not exactly a fan of the crowds. And nothing ruins the experience of watching a new movie for you more than a noisy audience. Or children. Or people with bad B.O. Or babies. Or annoying people that drink or talk over the movie. Or, or, or people that don't turn off the phone. Or people with orange hair at Batman-related movies. It's a lot of problems. Anyways... Um, on second thought, wait, is the, is the cat screwing me over? Hang on, wait, on second thought, I think I'll go to a movie. <laughs> on second thought, movie. On second thought, movies. Our character has a short attention span. Um, old theater versus new cinema. Old theater would be empty-ish, but we can do both, whatever. You eagerly buy your ticket from the kind old man in the booth and head inside. It's barren, it's barren of any trace of other people, and the decor looks like it hasn't changed since the 80s, maybe even the 70s, but it's what you're counting on. You consider buying some popcorn, but can't help be, but be concerned that everything at the concession stand might be expired. Modern movies, overpriced popcorn that's like $15 for a bag, old movie theaters, expired things, expired rug, expired employees, a lot of things are expired. And I'm sure that if you just pull out some of the rugs, it'd come at the seams because of silverfish and moths eating at it constantly when no one's looking. I don't know. You move on and walk through the halls, finally locating the theater designed on your ticket stub. As expected, the theater your movie will be playing in is completely empty. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You pick a spot right in the middle, even counting the seats and taking into consideration the gap of the staircase. Aren't you OCD? Is a cat gonna show up because it's empty too? As you settle in, the dim lights fade away, leaving the room pitch black for a few seconds. No cat yet. Before the screen flickers on, no commercials or trailers pop up, the movie just begins. Oh god, is it? F Jeez. Pleased, you shrug and let yourself get immersed in the opening, not thinking about the damn cat. But just as you're getting into the premise, the doors open behind you, momentarily casting light into the room and ruining the atmosphere. Oh, f who are you complaining about a door open? Shut the fuck up. You hold in a frustrated sigh. Over a person entering it. Bruh, calm fucking down. People have to enter the theater. Uh, I mean, 
old theaters, I guess it would be designed like I'd remember. I mean, a lot of theaters I'd remember, even from like 90s, how it would work is it's like you have a door that enters and then a walkway that l goes left and right. And there's walls in the way anyway, so the light should be behind a wall and not really be too much of a concern. It's more of, hey, if it's if the theaters are busy in the main hall, they open a door and all you hear is like the idle chatting of people in the main hallway, and all you hear is boop, 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 when the doors open, then yeah. But this guy's bitching over kind of trivial shit. Ugh, sorry, five, like three seconds of a door being open and a light beaming in? Ugh, oh, just shut the fuck up. It's a public establishment, after all. Yeah. The place can't exactly afford to stay open if you're the only customer. You have to tell yourself that as a character, as a person? Damn. Main character's letting themselves like be known as like a nitpicky Redditor or something. You try to refocus on the movie, but you sense the new presence slowly shifting around the theater. Pay it no mind! Unless it's the damn cat, but I'm sure it is the cat. Before heading in your general... G general direction, yes. Okay. Oh, bro, yeah, you, really, run, run. You, you, you gape in utter disbelief as the stranger shuffles down the aisle, only sit right in front of you. It's like, bro, I know you got the Heisenberg hat and all, but I will beat the shit out of you. There's no one else in here, uh, here and plenty of places to sit. The stranger is also unusually tall. Oh, it's actually, a, it's actually like a trench coat with five cats in it. Even with a stadium-like arrangement. Of, okay, I know, you're bitching about it. Uh, confront. Yo, dude. You hate confrontation. How dreadful. I don't know, man. You can already feel your palms starting to sweat. Your throat's closing up and your body's starting to shake. You've always been more of a flighter than a fighter. Now stop trying to make me cringe. Be paid for this ticket. Okay, let's get to what I said of confront the stranger. It took a long time to do what I told him to do. I didn't tell the character to whine and monologue his anxiety. I mean, but I don't know. Maybe I'm being really nitpicky, but... The movie continues to play in the background, but... but wait, but you feel as if a hush immediately falls, but did I... Did I what? You're angry enough that you ignore the signs of your body... You stand up even standing, and higher up on the incline, the stranger is still at ease. Yeah, he's in front of you, not behind you, so he's not seeing you stand up, and he doesn't know why. Can you confront... Con confront... Con con the movie continues to play. Anticipating what you planned. Okay. You, you had to yell. You're, he's right in front of you. Hey! The effort makes your words come out more harshly than you intended, like a sudden and vicious bark. But you figure they deserve it anyway. You're being a real jerk. <laughs> you sure showed him. You're being a real jerk, you know that? Just what are you playing at, huh? Are you trying to piss me off? <laughs> Just say, bro, can you move? You're in front of me. Are you like leave like the leave the insults maybe for later. You got to try to convince them first. And if they sh if they give resistance, then you call them a dick. It's like, "Hey, bro, can you move?" I mean, what what, what? Hmm. I mean, that circumstance, as soon as they sat down, I'd be like, are you for real, bro? <laughs> like, I'm not gonna... If, the more you delay it, the more awkward it gets. Obviously. So then you have to think of, if this person does what you don't expect them to do, you have to react right then and there. And with no emotions. So just be like, bro, you for real? Yeah, no, but... <sighs> just, this kind of confrontational is childish, though. It's... You're a real jerk. It's also... It's, it's like kitty language, I don't know, but it's it's not a mature rated game. Actually, wait. By American standards, I guess it kind of is. It's mature in the violent tendencies and the gore and the death and the pain. But when it comes to the language of the main character, he's all like goody two shoes. He's a SpongeBob, you know. The silence that follows your words is deafening. <laughs> it's like the guy just it's like actually a normal guy, but he ignores you. You had, like, you freaked out at them and they just continue being a douche and sitting in front of you. So much so that you glance at the screen only to find that the movie has paused. Your attention is ripped back to the stranger in front of you as they shift slightly. Like a small animal trying desperately to anticipate the moves of a predator, you don't move an inch. So it was five cats in a trench coat? You don't look away. You don't dare to blink. Instead, your eyes widen as the person's head turns. Then turns some more. 
then turns more beyond what should be possible neck bones cracking. Is the cat fucking with my eyes again? To face you directly? Ah, you can't move. Wide glowing eyes resting above a wider grinning mouth gaze down at you. The stranger point opens her mouth and what comes out is something impossible to comprehend. No. Fucking no. cats. No, not the nyas. No. no. Cat music? The voice is endless, endlessly deep and creaks like a weighty door foreboding and oddly melodic alluring, but also snaps you out of your, that, your terrified stance and before you know it, you're already out the door. You run through the halls of the empty theater heading for the exit. You feel something watching you from behind, but you're too afraid to look. The exit now in sight, you sprint forward and burst through the doors. You look around frantically and spot the crowded cinema across the street. People, that's what you need, safety and numbers and all that. Didn't you learn from the dog park? Without thinking... Yeah, no thinking. You rush into the street when a sinking sensation crawls down your spine, compelling you to look behind you. Compelling you? So it's now okay? Mmm, don't look behind you, don't look behind you. Well, I'm going to do that, thank you. Uh, no, look, just look. Despite your resistance, you feel your head turning to look back of its own accord. Unless that's like the curse, and if you look back, that's what you die, but, you know, I highly doubt it. While in the middle of the street, you catch a glimpse of a grotesque-looking person standing behind the glass doors of the old theater. Is it one of its prior owners, maybe? Watching you intensely, cradling something in their arms, something familiar, but... I'm gonna get hit by a truck. A glimpse is all you get, as a truck speeds forward and crashes into your body. You're waiting for, like, the mortis to pop up. You're killed on impact. Your body splattered across the road and crashed crushed further under the heavy tires. Oh, okay, we got Jojo'd. Wait, which one was that? Kira. Kira? Yoshikage? That's it. Ki yeah, yeah, 100%. We got, we got Kira. Or I, I guess in that instance, yoshikage Just not by an ambulance. You're killed on impact, yeah. Okay. Ending 16, poor screening arrangements. Hmm. You go to the old theaters and enjoy a film with an interesting stranger. Hmm. I'll presume it was maybe an older owner of the cat that just, the cat just goes place to place finding multiple owners. Uh, go to the new, wait, so I can go to the new cinema normally, or get chased to the new cinema. <laughs> Refusing to even risk a peek over your shoulder, you rush ugh, across, so you mean I looked behind me while standing coincidentally in the middle of the road and were too frightened, like frightened and panicked to realize that we're looking behind, not while still on a sidewalk, but conveniently on a road. Eh, the character did whine that he's a flighter rather than a fighter. <sighs> okay. You didn't realize that it felt like you've been surrounded by some kind of dreadful pressure. That wasn't a truck. Until it very suddenly vanishes, leaving you feeling more than a little shaken. But at least your at least breathing comes easier. You think it's within your best interest to repress everything that just happened. <laughs> yeah, okay, to the... PTSD vault, apparently. It's like it's like the Disney vault. And the, it, just like the Disney vault, it comes out to haunt you every every few years, of course. I think that's at least how the Disney vault works. <laughs> oh, no, I don't watch Disney anymore. <laughs> I mean, if I had kids, I'm sure I would, but my god. Deciding to wait for the movie you've been anticipating to be available on DVD or streaming. No Blu-ray? No, no barely existent HD DVD? <laughs> You join the long line outside the new cinema. Then again, I don't know what year this game is at, so... By the time you've reached the ticket booth, you just want to get inside. So you pick a movie at random and take your ticket... Why at random? Alright, well, take it from random, then from the tired-looking teenager manning the booth. And the decor is... Chick. Is it Cheek? I can't even remember how that's pronounced. You know what? I'm going to double-check. Alright. Nah, no, it's, it's pronounced Cheek. Okay. Chic and sleek, and the inside is bustling with people. It's not what you're usually into, but it's kind of nice not being alone. Even if you feel a little lonely watching families and groups of friends laughing among themselves. 
You'd get some popcorn, but the lines at the concession stands are long and the prices are criminal anyways. Yep. You go through the halls. And follow the signs to the theater designated on the ticket. Sorry. You sigh at the sight of the absolutely crowded theater. Exactly why I went to the older theater, but then you ran away from the Nyang cat person. You head towards a seat only to be told by the person next to it that it's being saved for someone. This happens a few more times before you finally manage to get yourself settled into a seat annoyingly off-center to the screen. Yeah, that'll hurt your neck. But the screen is at least visible, if not a little too close, so you grit your teeth and bear it. We can't all be the heroes, or the main characters, sorry. You can't all be the main characters in the movie theater seatings, right? We, we sometimes want to hope that we go in at the right time, but that's exactly why it's like, go in when it's bustling if you want to be first and feel special, or you go later when there's not enough people to bug you. It's one or the other. Do it late or do it early. I, I'd rather do it late, if anything. But yeah, the lights fade out, but the chatter doesn't. The rest of the audience seems content to talk through the commercials and even through the trailers. N that's yeah, that's fine. That's it's who cares. You figure the chatter will stop when the movie actually begins. I don't think this kind of dialogue even fucking matters because our main character is preemptively warning us that they have like anxiety attacks over whether or not hypothetically these people continue talking when the movie starts. When it's just like, why worry about that until it actually does possibly happen, then handle it when it does happen, if it happens. But this, but it's just like, oh no, I entered the theaters, what if, what if they keep talking when the movie starts, oh no. It's like, does this, does this help build story in any way? That to reveal the character's behavior? Is it, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out, or just like at the end of this series, I'll do a complete rundown of like this character is an annoying little bitch, and he whines about everything. Like like part thirty, actually, well, maybe not part thirty, but you know what I mean. We'll see. But doesn't get out uh, get even slightly quieter as the opening scene starts to play out. You sigh out loud, not thinking anyone would hear you anyways. I mean, it's not like everyone doesn't want to watch the film, so this is why you avoid movie theaters like the plague. It's a different eye-shaped cat. Suddenly the screen change changes, showing the face of the black cat. This cat is obsessive. I just met you. A familiar black cat. Confused murmurs fill the room, but then the cat on the screen meows. He's trying to hypnotize me on now. I'm like a fucking dolphin. Okay. The sound is strange, and not all not all like any cat should sound. I mean, a lot of cats sound fucking weird. I've seen cats that don't even have their, like, voice box, you know, completely made, and they make silly sounds. I don't know. Cats make the weirdest sounds. Um, haunting, almost melodic. And layered as if made of multiple voices of different creatures. Creatures that would probably never say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that... It's it's like a cat is like a behind the, th it's like a cat's in the theater just like meowing in the goddamn microphone that's just turn amplified and has a reverb on it. You sit in confusion, wondering why you haven't already gotten up and left to complain. I know, right? But then you hear it. It's scattered and dissonant at first, but among the crowd, people start to chant along with a cat on the screen. Oh God, this is what it feels like to not be a cat owner. When you're surrounded by cat lovers. It's, it's... There you go, you can hear it without me interrupting and talking over it. Oh god. It's just the same thing, but louder. Soon, the entire room is chanting in perfect unison, everyone staring intently at the cat on the screen. You're feeling strangely drawn to the screen. That's where you leave. But the compulsion to stare blankly like the others isn't that strong for now. Also, you start to notice out of the corner of your eye that some of the people in your immediately, immediate vicinity, if they're staring at you, that's when you move, yeah. Yeah, it's looking at you. No. 
They're outright staring holes into you, even as they continue chanting. It's very judgmental. They don't miss a beat as they slowly begin to frown at you in blatant disapproval. <laughs> the girl, he's not meowing. Fucking, what the fuck's wrong with him? Their scowls deepen as time goes on, as if they're getting impatient. Hmm, I'm not gonna meow with it. That's what the cat wants. Fuck that cat. No. Uh, no, I'm leaving. Fuck you. This is too weird. I need to get out of here. I'm probably getting an ending if I do chant, so I'll go back and get it, though, in case it's like a dead end. Gathering your courage or perhaps putting your fear to use, you stand up. Uh, fully intending to leave the theater when everything comes to an abrupt stop. All of the chanting stops, even the cat's chanting on the screen. You tense and risk a glance around the theater. Well, they're, really, they're, they're all staring at you. Every single one of them. They're not moving. They're not even blinking. You swallow throat, suddenly dry, even though a nervous sweat completely soaks through your clothes. You highly doubt that sitting back down will fix the situation, your legs shaking under the audience's unnaturally intense scrutiny, but you force yourself to step forward and forward and forward until you finally reach the end of the aisle. You feel their collective gaze even worse on the staircase. All their heads have turned uncomfortably to the left to look directly at you. The screen illuminates their faces, making clearer their blank scowls. They seem even more upset they had been minutes ago, identical frowns, lines digging between their brows. You keep going, the heavy atmosphere becoming more and more oppressive with every step. You're so tense with anticipation that you fully expect someone to grab at you from behind. But no one does. You don't hear any of them even get up. You exit the theater holding your breath as the doors close behind you. It just depends on whether or not the cat wants me dead or only dead if I push limits, which is what I'm thinking. Otherwise, it's trying to scope out whether or not a person's a good enough new owner for it or something. Or maybe it's trying to find the, the one perfect owner for him. I don't know what the cat wants, but I'm sure the true ending is probably me adopting it rather than killing it. That's my presumption. You briskly walk through the halls, putting as much distance as possible between you and that theater full of people. Finally reaching the lobby, you just barely manage to catch yourself from falling to the floor as you gulp in huge gasps of air. Pant, pant, pant. You expect to feel relief as your breathing calms, but you feel a lingering sense of dread that only spikes once you finally notice it. As well as its source, you look up and your stomach sinks. <laughs> it's like a Parasite Eve battle happening. Why didn't you meow with us, buddy? All the people in the lobby area of the movie theater, everyone in the line at the concession stand, all of them are staring at you, and they... They look even angrier than the people in the theater. You don't hesitate this time. You duck your head, avoiding on eye contact, and leave. You ignore the glares of everyone in the ticket booths and the lines leading to them. You make your way home. Whenever you dare to look up at someone on the way, you flinch at the blatant anger, fury, and disgust on their face. You think you start to hear the faint sound of cats meowing behind you, or maybe a kitten's. Doesn't matter, you just want to go home. You reach your front door and fumble with the keys, cowering from the look of pure hatred on your neighbor's face as he stares at you from his door. You finally get inside your apartment, lock all the locks on the door, and slide down with your back against it until you're sitting on the floor. Pant, pant, gulp, pant. You allow yourself a moment to breathe. Now home, your heartbeat calms and your fear slowly bleeds from you, leaving you stra feeling strangely empty. You pass the kitchen and head to your room, slip under the covers of your bed trying to fall asleep. Maybe it's all just a bad dream. As you fall into a fitful sleep, Sure to be full of nightmares of glaring eyes, you try to ignore the ever-increasing sounds of cats meowing and yowling in the distance outside of your apartment. Ending 17, Black Sheep. Well, that'd be my ending for sure. It's like, fuck you guys, I'm not meowing with you, I'll keep fucking leaving. You weren't a big fan of the movie? Eh, the rest of the audience might have had their opinions on that. Okay, we got 4 out of 40, wow. Well, yeah, we're gonna have to see, I guess. I, I'll assume we survive if we meow. But fine. Thinking fast, you look to the screen and begin to chant in tandem with the crowd. Yeah. It's just like... Oh, okay. 
You feel the harshness of their collective gaze oh, start to ebb away. The air in the theater becoming lighter once again. You release air shakily, just realizing that you'd been holding your breath earlier. You feel stuck. Surely you can't just up and leave now, not after whatever all that was. The people around you all seem fine now, but there's no telling if they'd get aggressive at you for even moving too much, never mind outright getting up and leaving. You decide to let this run its course, hopefully someone will come along, right? Or at least turn the film off. You continue to chant along with everyone. Eh, this feels like a dead end. But who knows? Maybe the cat's appeased and will let me go. You start to feel lightheaded. You feel as if you could fall asleep, but your eyes don't feel heavy in the slightest. You try to look around and gauge the other's emotional state. But you can't seem to look away from the screen. You try again, but you're still locked into eye contact with the cat on screen. No. No. Uh, you attempt to physically force your line of vision away. You steal your nerves. You steal your nerves, ready to throw yourself to the ground if you need to, but your body only gets as far as tensing up for a moment before completely loosening itself again, making you lay back limply into your seat. You think you should be panicking right about now, but even your brain feels limp. So this is what cat people feel. Or cat owners. Your thoughts a vaguely muted pastel pink. Airy, sickeningly sweet and loosely spun, like cotton candy. You like cotton candy. You think you shouldn't mind your thoughts and body being like cotton candy either, so why get up and ruin that? It's nice here. You're more at peace than you've ever felt before in such a crowded room. Still chanting, you've never felt so aligned and in tune with another person, let alone with an entire room full of complete strangers. You're not. You're not alone. Out of the corner of your eye, the person next to you starts to sink back even further into their chair. Then they sink more, and then more. Not like they're slouching or reclining, but more like <laughs> the gravity's crushing them. Uh, deflating. Their skin bunches up and wrinkles like fabric as if their muscle, their bones, have started to dis disintegrate. Their eyes dim before sinking into their sockets. Their mouth, still tempting to chant, falls open over a cutoff. No. Gaping as the word ends in an awful hiss, a final weak release of air. You muse thoughtfully about whether or not you should be distressed at the sight. But even then, the blanket of peace doesn't leave you. Suddenly, from the pile of skin and clothes next to you, you see a lump moving around. You watch in a dazed fascination as the lump makes its way to the part of the skin where the head used to be, and out from the mouth. Oh god, it's another one! It's how they're made! It's how they reproduce! Crawls a tiny black kitten. Yeah, no. No, I don't want to be a cat. No, you can hear the familiar hissing sound all around you as the unified chants start to fade, only to be replaced with the faint mewling of kittens. Finally, your voice is the only one still chanting, still human and alone again. You don't want that. You can't go back to that. Not again, not again, please. Just then, you go completely limp. Your body feels light, but it might as well weigh several tons, because you realize quite suddenly that you can't move. Not an inch. You can't shift your eyes to look around. You can't even breathe. But somehow, the chant continues to creak weakly from your mouth. A few kittens come forward and perch themselves on the chairs around you, watching your sinking body, mewling as they wait for their youngest sibling to emerge. From you. Dozens of glowing eyes peer down at you. And as your eyes start to cave into the sockets of your softening skull, you manage to make out the silhouette of a familiar cat perching on a seat right in front of you. Your vision finally fades, as that same hiss of air expels itself from your mouth. The last thing you sense is something small and alive shifting eagerly under your skin. Oh, come on, it's not even you as the cat. Happy birthday. I, I don't even become the cat, it's something replaces me like a Doctor Who kind of thing. You have a front row seat to the touching reunion of multiple siblings. So, the baby kittens would be more like the children to the main bad cat, I guess you could say. Alright, so the movie theater in itself was all completely bad. There's only one thing I need to check out then, and that is if I go to the movie theater and don't go to the old theater. 
and just go to the new cinema. Nope. The movie theaters is just bad, period. And the dogs, only one of them is bad. I'd presume there'd be more, but honestly... Hmm, yeah, there's nothing else at the dog park, and like, unless it changes, maybe there'll be a change. Because this game did have the thing where, like, the endings button was not... Or wait, the endings button was not there, and the load button wasn't there on purpose until you get one ending. So there's always a, a, a chance that a lot of, like, the endings here, like the one, two, three, four, these... A bunch of these probably will be, like, main endings, so to speak. Because if the side endings from Dead Ends are, like, starting here... It gives me the feeling that we won't see, like, what's here until... There's maybe a chance, like, hey... Say, hypothetically, we, in the future, get along with the cat. The cat has more favoritism towards us, and then we go back to the dog park. Would the cat be more forgiving? Don't think so, but there's always those kind of, you know, variables. But either way, I'm gonna leave it there. A little insanity at the movie theater, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed and look forward to more of where we're going next. Wait, where are we going next? Wait, I, I guess... Actually, the, mo the movie theater was just bad completely. Never mind, wait, wait. That means I have to go all the way back here. That's funny. Because we go to the... Wait, what if we go... Wait, movie theater. Old theater. Oh. We could just leave. This is too weird. Feeling uncomfortable, you decide to leave. It's something we can just do something else. And now what? What if I go to the new... No, it's the same thing. I'm a little curious on... Let me, let me actually... You know what? I will go back to the movie theater then. Let's not end that yet. Because we're not done done. If we confront, we go to the new movie theater. But if we go to the movie, go to the old one, leaving, move to another spot. Well, let's go do this, and then the theater's done. Then I'll end the episode. You don't want to risk escalating the situation further. This whole thing is already making you uneasy. Why would they choose to sit right in front of you? Surely they know you wouldn't be able to see past them. Shaking your head with passive-aggressive scoff in the stranger's direction, you rel reluctantly pick uh, another less perfect seat in the theater. But as you settle down, you see the person get up. What a piece of shit. Only to once uh, again sit down in the seat directly in front of you. You can't help but think there might be... Uh, but think that maybe it would be nice to have someone else here if it meant not being alone with this weird jerk. Move to another spot. You move again. <laughs> You bristle, annoyed and a little humiliated. Are they just getting a kick out of this or something? You wasted enough time with this jerk and you don't even know what's going on in the movie anymore. Oh, cause that's it. If we leave, it's probably the same. I'll, 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 hey, quick save, you know, I'll do a quick save, fine. Um, can we confront? No. Nope. Quick load. Leave. Now what? <laughs> And go back to the old one. And then leave. Because he comes back. That's it. It's like, there's nothing I can do. Just move. Confront. Then it becomes the same. <laughs> and then we get hit by a truck. I don't know. Let's leave it. The, the theaters are done. So yeah, the next thing we need to do instead is... Carnival. Well, that'll be fun. A carnival. What could go wrong? With a cat, can, that can make it so everyone and everything can look at you all angrily and distort reality with illusions that will feel real and basically can kill you. Would the cat have that actual power of turning you into a cat and turning other people into cats? Or was it all in your head? We don't really know, but I'm going to assume, based on its powers, you turning into a cat in the movie theater didn't really happen, but it's just a painful scenario the cat is feeding into your brain of a way it wants to kill you or just, you know, whimsical ideas of how the cat can be, you know, project evil thoughts into your head kind of thing is at least where I'm thinking it is because everything, the dog area, it, you know, the illusions with the dog, the illusions of it transforming, the 
the the park Saleo, the dogs weren't evil themselves, nor did they transform. It's just the, it gave the illusion of the dogs. I just don't know if at the very end it released its full power and actually could begin to distort reality in reality rather than distort only reality through your perception of reality. Because there's a difference between reality and a perception of reality if that really had to be said. But with that said and done, I'll leave it here. And uh, just, yeah, let's... Wait, was that quit to the... No, that's main menu. There we go. Back to this music. But hey, if you enjoyed and look forward to the carnival, please leave a like, comment, hit the subscribe button, become a full subscriber, and the notification down below for updates on my videos. Thank you for watching. Until the next time. Mm -hmm.